fluid lines and fittings. 1. Which coupling nut should be selected for use with 1 2 inch aluminum oil lines which are to be assembled using flared tube ends and standard AN nuts, sleeves, and fittings? AN-818-8 2. The term, cold flow, is generally associated with Impressions left in natural or synthetic rubber hose material. 3. Metal tubing fluid lines are sized by wall thickness and outside diameter in 1 16 inch increments. 4. What is the color of NAN steel flare tube fitting? Black. 5. A certain amount of slack must be left in a flexible hose during installation because, when under pressure, it contracts in length and expands in diameter. 6. If a flare tube coupling nut is over tightened, where is the tube most likely to be weak and damaged? At the sleeve and flare junction. 7. Flexible lines must be installed with a slack of 5 to 8 percent of the length. 8. Which of the following statements is true regarding minimum allowable bend radii for 1.5 inches OD or less aluminum alloy and steel tubing of the same size? The minimum radius for steel is greater than for aluminum. 9. Which of the following hose materials are compatible with phosphate ester base hydraulic fluids? 1. Butyl. 2. Teflon. 1 and 2. 10. Which of the following statements is are correct in reference to flare fittings? 1. AN fittings have an identifying shoulder between the end of the threads and the flare cone. 1. 11. A gas or fluid line marked with the letters PH and is used to carry a hazardous substance. 12. The material specifications for a certain aircraft require that a replacement oil line be fabricated from 3 4 inch.072 5052 aluminum alloy tubing. What is the inside dimension of this tubing? 0.606 inch. 13. Excessive stress on fluid or pneumatic metal tubing caused by expansion and contraction due to temperature changes can best be avoided by. Providing bends in the tubing. 14. In a metal tubing installation, tension is undesirable because pressurization will cause it to expand and shift. 15. When installing bonded clamps to support metal tubing, remove paint or anodizing from tube at clamp location. 16. Which statement is true regarding flattening of tubing and bends? Flattening by not more than 25% of the original diameter is permissible. 17. Scratches or nicks on the straight portion of aluminum alloy tubing may be repaired if they are no deeper than 10% of the wall thickness. 18. Which statement concerning Bernoulli's principle is true? The pressure of a fluid decreases at points where the velocity of the fluid increases. 19. Which tubings have the characteristics, high strength, abrasion resistance necessary for use in a high pressure, 3,000 pounds per square inch hydraulic system for operation of landing gear and flaps? Corrosion resistant steel annealed or 1,4-H. 20. Flexible hose used in aircraft systems is classified in size according to the inside diameter. 21. From the following sequences of steps, indicate the proper order you would use to make a single flare on a piece of tubing. 1. Place the tube in the proper size hole in the flaring block. 2. Project the end of the tube slightly from the top of the flaring tool, about the thickness of a dime. 3. Slip the fitting nut and sleeve on the tube. 4. Strike the plunger several light blows with a lightweight hammer or mallet and turn the plunger one half turn after each blow. 5. Tighten the clamp bar securely to prevent slippage. 6. Center the plunger or flaring pin over the tube. 
three one six two five four twenty two the best tool to use when cutting aluminum tubing or any tubing of moderately soft metal is a hand operated will type tubing cutter twenty three a scratch or nick in aluminum tubing can be repaired provided it does not appear in the heel of a bend 24. Hydraulic tubing, which is damaged in a localized area to such an extent that repair is necessary, may be repaired by cutting out the damaged area and utilizing a swag tube fitting to join the tube ends. 25. In most aircraft hydraulic systems, two-piece tube connectors consisting of a sleeve and a nut are used when the tubing flare is required. The use of this type connector eliminates the possibility of reducing the flare thickness by wiping or ironing during the tightening process. 26. What is an advantage of a double flare on aluminum tubing? More resistant to damage when the joint is tightened. 27. The primary purpose of providing suitable bends and fluid and pneumatic metal tubing runs is to prevent excessive stress on the tubing. 28. Which statement S about military standard MS flareless fittings is our correct? 1. During installation, MS flareless fittings are normally tightened by turning the nut a specified amount, rather than being torqued. 1. 29. 1. Bonded clamps are used for support when installing metal tubing. 2. Unbonded clamps are used for support when installing wiring. Regarding the above statements, both number 1 and number 2 are true. 30. Which statement is true regarding the variety of symbols utilized on the identifying color code bands that are currently used on aircraft plumbing lines? Symbols are always black against a white background regardless of line content. 31. A 3-8-inch aircraft high-pressure flexible hose as compared to 3-8-inch metal tubing used in the same system will have equivalent flow characteristics. 32. When flaring aluminum tubing for use with and fittings, the flare angle must be 37 degrees. 33. The maximum distance between end fittings to which a straight hose assembly is to be connected is 50 inches. The minimum hose length to make such a connection should be 52-1-2 inches.